Hello, everybody. We are at the top of the hour, and it is time to get started. We are at the New Jersey Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair, powered by StriveScan. My name is Sabel Rasim. I'm your facilitator for this evening. Thank you all so much for joining us. We have some absolutely amazing institutions here to give you some awesome information about themselves. But before we get started, just a few housekeeping items. You're definitely going to want to ask questions, and we definitely encourage it. So how are you going to do that? Well, if you look down at the bottom of your Zoom bar, your little toolbar, you'll see the Q&A button. You're going to click that and then type in your questions to the presenters at any time. I stress, at any time. Don't wait until the institution presents that you're looking to ask a question for. Go ahead and ask the question. Don't wait until the last minute because we will not have time or we will not have a live Q&A with your questions at the end. So please make sure you ask, ask those questions at any point in time. Also about your questions, please make sure you put the institution's name within your question so we know who the question goes to. Also, you're muted, your video is turned off. This is a webinar style type of virtual college fair. So that means the panelists cannot see or hear you. So interacting through that Q&A is super important. Also fun little fact, although your chat is disabled as an attendee on your end, you can actually check out the chat because our presenters might be putting their contact information or important links that they want you to check out. So definitely check out the chat. Also sign up for more sessions. This is one of many, many college presentations offered. So sign up for the next session for the next time slot if you have some time this evening. Last but certainly not least, Maybe mom missed out on tonight, or maybe you have a friend that wants to check out these institutions too, or maybe you just want to relive the fun with us again. Well, guess what? You can do that because the recording will be available within the next coming days of this session. And guess what? All sessions are being recorded. So if you want to check those out, you can certainly do so. It'll be available at strivescan.com backslash New Jersey. All right, y'all, without further ado, let's get started. First up, we have University of Tennessee. Hello everyone, my name is Cheryl. I'm gonna be your admissions counselor for the University of Tennessee, Knoxville. So to let you know a little bit about our institution, uh, we have a large student body. We have about 23,000 undergraduate students, uh, but we still keep our class sizes relatively small. 17 to one is our student to faculty ratio. A little bit about a few of our metrics. So 89% of our students receive financial aid and scholarships through UT. And I'll go a little bit more into merit-based scholarships in a few slides. And also 84% of our graduates have reported that they are employed or in graduate school within six months of graduation. So you're gonna be getting a really good return on investment here at UT. Lastly, we have over 360 undergraduate programs of study. So whether you know exactly what you're wanting to get into or you're kind of a little bit undecided, we have a ton of options for you to choose from. So here's a list of our academic colleges. We have a college for agriculture, architecture and design, the arts and sciences, business, communication and information, education, health and human sciences, engineering, law, nursing, social work, and veterinary medicine. And then we also have a few competitive programs as well. So here's a list of our competitive programs. We have uh, competitive programs in the College of Agriculture, or excuse me, Architecture and Design, Nursing, Engineering, our Pre-Pharmacy Direct Admit Program, and our School of Nursing. So for these programs, we're gonna require additional admissions uh, documents in order for you to go through that admissions process. And a little bit more about the student experience. And so I was mentioning return on investment. We do that through our Student Success Center. So through the Center of Career Development, Academic Success Centers, you're able to engage in internships and co-ops. Also living on campus is a huge part of your student experience. So we have 14 residence halls and 14 living and learning communities. And an LLC is just the opportunity to be able to live in um, a residence hall amongst others in your same major or program. So for example, we have an LLC for engineering students, first gen students and nursing students as well. And also, like I said, we are a large institution. So a way to make our campus a little bit smaller is by getting involved. We have over 600 clubs and organizations. One of my favorites is the Chill and Grill Club. You literally just go outside, grill, and hang out with your friends. It's my kind of party. Also, we have intramurals and club sports. We have Greek life and our Vol success teams. And then lastly, studying abroad. We have, uh, we have programs with over 50 countries and you get to choose your duration. 
And let's get into the application. So you're able to apply through our VIP portal or through the Common App. And here is a checklist of all of our required items. So we do require a self-reported academic record, an application fee, a required essay, and a test optional essay. Here we also have optional items, but I will tell you, make them required. Um, I would rather see you have more information than less information. So provide letters of recommendation, supporting statements, and resumes if you can. Also, here are some of our important dates. October 1st, is, as always, is FAFSA. Uh, we also have November 2nd as our early action application deadline. If you're wanting to be eligible for competitive scholarships or for honors and scholars programs, you need to apply by that deadline. We also have the regular admissions application deadline, which is December 15th. That's the last day you can apply and get a merit-based aid, get merit-based aid from UT. And then lastly, May 1st is our confirmation deadline. And then I mentioned scholarships from, from, from before. So um, scholarships for, for test inclusive students begin at a 3.6 and a 24 ACT or an 1160 SAT. And the scholarship ranges goes from 4,000 to 18,000 annually, as you can see in these two slides here. We also have a scholarship option for Beacon for test optional students, which is called a Beacon Scholarship, as a 3.8 core weighted GPA to be considered. And then this scholarship goes between 4,000 and 18,000 annually as well. Lastly, experiencing Rocky Top. And so we are open for students to come on and visit. Uh, so if you'd like to see uh, UT in all of its glory, you can set up an on-campus tour. We also have a ton of virtual options available for you as well. You can chat with the current student in your intended major. You can do a virtual tour, or you can even engage in an open house to visit all the different offices on campus. And you can do that by visiting our visit.utk.edu website as well. Lastly, I do have this really nifty QR code. So if you'd like this information all on your phone, you can take your phone's camera and scan it right now. And you'd be able to get our out-of-state admissions brochure directly onto your phone. And then lastly, I have my information right here. So like I said, I'm the admissions counselor for New Jersey students. And so my email is available there and also my phone number is available. If you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. And I appreciate you guys being here today. Awesome. Thank you so much. If you have any questions for the University of Tennessee, please put it down in the Q&A at the bottom. Next up, we have Glenville State College. Awesome. Thank you. So excited to be joining y'all tonight. My name is Lexi and I'm here with representing Glenville State College. Um, I'm the admissions counselor for GSC. Um, if you're not really familiar with Glenville State College, we are located right in the heart of West Virginia. We are a smaller community, but you're so conveniently located. Um, we're so centralized that you're just a short drive away from our bigger cities like Charleston, Huntington and Morgantown. Here is a complete list of all of the academic departments that we offer. Um, so I'll kind of highlight a little bit of these. We offer four-year degrees, two-year degrees, and then also um, fully online degrees if you're looking at that. Um, probably one of my favorite department is our criminal justice department. We're ranked um, number one in the state of West Virginia and 16th in the nation. We have our own crime scene house on campus where they do a lot of blood splattering work and um, we have a training facility that they go to and do a whole lab. Um, so it's, it's really great. Um, we're, we have a lot of great programs with our education department. Um, we've partnered up with a, a bigger school, Marshall. So um, we have accounting, um, exercise science, and even pharmacy. So you can come out of the program with your master's and your doctorate which is really great. If you're kind of more hands-on and looking for that, we also offer our land resources department, which has environmental science, um, land surveying. Um, so a lot of great um, things happening here at Glenville. Um, we have a smaller college, like I said, so you definitely get that in-person um, classroom. So you're able to kind of connect with your professor, 
you're definitely known here. You're not going to be just another number in the auditorium, which I think is really great. You're definitely known on campus. And it really, um, everyone's just kind of working together to make you as successful as you want to be here. Um, but just because we are a smaller school doesn't mean that we are not diverse. We are very diverse. We have um, a lot of transfer students and a lot of international students. And I think that really has to do with um, some of our great athletic programs. So we are a part of the NCAA Division II, um, very competitive Mount Eastern Conference. Um, probably the best thing. Um, that we have here at Glenville are our facilities that we offer. I like to say that we have kind of um, D1 facilities at a D2 school. So as you can see on the screen, that's our Waco Center, um, not pictured. We have, you know, a full weight room, turf room, boxing ring, um, brand new baseball and softball turf fields. Um, if you're into esports, we just built a brand new esports arena. Um, we have acro and tumbling. Um, we have a lot of great things to offer our students. So even our musicians, we have a pioneer stage located downtown. Um, we have a golf course, a shooting range, uh, about 325 acres of land that our high adventure team uses for hiking and um, that we have for hunting. So a lot of great activities for you to kind of take advantage of here. And so for the, like, you guys, the next kind of step would be to apply. Um, on the screen, that is our um, link to our application, but I'll also go ahead and link that for you in the chat. Um, because you guys are on tonight, you actually are gonna get um, to use our free waiver code, which is hashtag go pioneers. It'll waive um, that application fee, make it free. Kind of the best thing about our application is that it's non-binding. You can submit that. There's no essay or anything. It literally takes about 10 minutes. We get that information in our office. We reach out to you and I kind of, you know, look at it and see, oh, you're interested in high adventure. You're interested in playing football. Um, you're interested in criminal justice. So I kind of put all that information together. We send you out a packet of info, send you out a GSC swag box and um, put you in contact with the right people. A big thing I always like to talk about too is definitely if you haven't done so, um, we're gonna you know get you on doing your FAFSA. It's very important for you um, as a student coming in to make sure you're getting all the financial aid available to you. On the screen, that is our code that you can use. Um, we accept all outside scholarships. You can stack them together here. You're gonna get the most um, maximum affordable education here. As you can see on the screen, that is our um, in-state and out-of-state tuition. So you're definitely getting um, the most maximum affordable education. And so uh, next, I would just like to tell you guys, come visit us uh, on campus. Our campus is open. We have been able to be open. Um, we haven't had to close for COVID. We've been able to have in-person classes and are on track for that for the fall as well. Um, we have some open houses coming up where you actually, um, it's going to be a two day weekend event so you can come to our football game our all of our departments will be there and um, free food live music, and then the next day is going to be at our baseball and softball fields so i'll put links to all that also and um, so y'all can get connected. So thank you guys and I hope you have a great rest of your night go pioneers. Awesome, thank you so much. If you have any questions for Glenville State College, please put it down in the Q&A at the bottom. Next up, we have Goucher College. Hi everyone, thank you for being here tonight. My name is Megan Steely and I am the New Jersey Admissions Counselor for Goucher College. Um, Goucher is a small private liberal arts school located about 20 minutes north of Baltimore, Maryland, which is about two to four hours from you, depending where in New Jersey you are coming from. And this allows students to access the city as well as DC only about an hour away. And Baltimore is also home to 14 other colleges and universities allowing for cross collaboration between those students. Um, and then looking at our campus, it is very beautiful, very wooded. You would never assume that there is a mall within five minutes walk from campus. 
And breaking down the numbers a little bit, we have about 1400 undergraduate students, as well as 700 or so graduate students, primarily in online programs. Our average class size is about 15, so you absolutely get to know your professors and your fellow classmates, and they get to know you as well. So most of our classes are discussion based. And for a school as small as Goucher, our student body is diverse in many different ways. Um, so we have students from about 45 states and almost 50 different countries. Um, about 40% are coming from the state of Maryland. About 40% of our students are students of color. About 40% are members of the LGBTQ community. About 30% are first generation students and about 30% are student athletes. So definitely not a cookie cutter Goucher student. And now when you look at the academic side of things, Goucher does things a little bit differently in the way that we sort of set up the commons curriculum, which is our gen ed curriculum. There's a lot of flexibility there. And this begins with the first year seminar where you're really getting a chance to explore a topic of interest to you. There are over 25 different sections of this course everything from where the wild things are that looks at the history of wilderness in the United States to the secret life of puppets and a class on censorship and journalism. And then we have our complex problem exploration courses. And with these students are able to look at one specific topic from a variety of different subject areas. For instance, a class called disease and discrimination that looks at AIDS and diabetes, both from a biological and a sociological standpoint. So this way you're able to learn from classmates in different disciplines and really understand everything that comes into play with these topics. Um, we then also have our areas of proficiency that students are asked to meet, as well as our institutional commitments in race, power and perspective and environmental sustainability. These are not specific classes that you will take, but themes and topics that you will encounter really from day one um, in your classes and outside your classes. And when it comes to majors, Goucher has a wide variety of majors and you have until the end of your sophomore year to declare. Um, students will double major and minor. Most popular majors include psychology, biology, international relations, and business. Um, but you really can combine anything and then even design your own major. And then lastly, from an academic standpoint, Goucher requires that all students study abroad, um, either for a traditional semester abroad, where you enroll directly into an international university, or through a three-week um, intensive course abroad led by Goucher faculty members that go primarily during the summer. Um, this is a chance for students to gain a global perspective and step as far outside their comfort zone as they can stand. Um, and this really is something that becomes a part of the conversation in the classroom and outside the classroom, pulling from these experiences. Now I mentioned life outside the classroom. Um, Goucher is a residential campus. 98% of our students live on campus all four years. So there really is something to be said about life outside of the classroom. Um, all of our first year students live in the first year village that was very intentionally built to foster community. Um, and then we also have over 60 different clubs and student organizations, everything from student government to a beekeeping club, events put on by our student engagement team, like open mic nights and movie nights. And um, we also have our wellness center that does um, fitness classes, CRE, the Center for Race, Equity, and Identity, that is a safe space for students from marginalized communities, but also a place of learning, and also our 21 Division Three athletic teams. And then when you were looking after graduation, 96% uh, of our students are either pursuing further education or employment within a year of graduation. And students are going um, all over the world um, and nationally to some of the top name both companies and universities. Um, and oftentimes students are both working and pursuing further employment. Um, and then just as you're thinking of applying, we um, are on the common application. We are test optional and have been test optional since 2006. All students are automatically reviewed for merit scholarships. Um, and then we would also love to continue connecting with you. And um, so we are offering 
virtual information sessions every day of the week, um, as well as our virtual tour on our website. You are able to connect with current students as well. Um, and then we are also open um, for limited visitors on campus, um, as well as our driving tour. And um, so hopefully you are able to connect with Goucher and I'll put my information in the chat. Thank you. Thank you so much. If you have any questions for Goucher College, please put it down in the Q&A at the bottom. Next up, we have Gwen and Mercy University. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Uh, my name is Ashley Hazeltine, and I'm part of the admissions team over at Gwen and Mercy University, or G Mercy U for short. Again, just wanted to thank you guys for taking the time to come and hang out with us today and learn a little bit about what all of our institutions have to offer. So to give you guys a quick snapshot of GMRCU, we are a small private Catholic college located about 30 minutes northwest of Center City, Philadelphia, in a beautiful suburb called Gwynedd Valley, PA. Uh, GMRCU was founded in 1948 by the Sisters of Mercy, and we currently have just under 2,000 undergraduate students. The majority of those students, about 1,500 of them, live, work, and have classes on our main campus in Gwynedd Valley. Uh, we have a pretty expansive campus. It's 314 acres, so our students really do get the best of both worlds. When you're on campus, it feels really like a college campus should. It's quiet, there's lots of green space and trees, beautiful brick buildings. It's a great place to be in the spring when the flowers are blooming and the fall when the leaves start to turn. But we're right in a dense suburban area with a lot of green amenities, including coffee shops, a mall, a movie theater, and even a SEPTA regional rail line stop, which can take you down into Center City, all within about a five minute drive of campus. So you get all of those great amenities while still getting to live that traditional college lifestyle. Uh, we, since we are a smaller university, I always say sometimes it comes with big perks. Uh, one of them being that we have a low student to faculty ratio. It averages out at about 10 to one. So you're guaranteed to never be one face in a 500 person lecture or a name just randomly seen and pulled off of a roster. Uh, your professors get to know you really, really well during your time on campus and they really are in invested in individual student success. Uh, on campus, we do have 30 different academic majors across three schools and 15 minors in different disciplines as well. So depending on what you're interested in, there really is something for everybody and a way for you to even explore interests outside of your major as well. And one thing I want to touch on before we move forward that's pretty important to us, uh, we want to make sure that students are getting a high quality education at a great price. So 100% of our first time full time students receive some sort of merit aid from GMRCU. And we'll talk Talk about that a little bit further on in the presentation. But just so you guys can get a snapshot of what we have to offer, again, we have our three different schools on campus, the School of Arts and Sciences, the School of Business and Education, and then our Francis M. McGuire School of Nursing and Health Professions. So obviously, we're not going to go through the whole list of major and programs here, uh, but just to give you guys some highlights of some of our most popular majors, uh, they would be biology, criminal justice, psychology, accounting, which does come with a CPA track option, early education, and then we're most well known for nursing. On campus, we have a, a state-of-the-art academic building, state-of-the-art laboratory facilities, and again, being so centrally located to Philadelphia and all the great things that come right outside of it, our students have a lot of opportunities to get off campus and continue learning, whether that's through research experiences, internships, co-ops, and other opportunities as well. And then if you're not totally sure what you want to study just yet, that's totally fine. Uh, we have our university studies program on campus, which provides individual support for those students as you explore your different interests, your different majors, and with the help of a Ooh, excuse me, with the help of a professional academic advisor, as well as one of our team members in career development. So you get that exposure right off the bat to help you find your path. And as students are moving through their experience at GMRCU, we've always tried to encourage them to really think about what you're doing, be intentional in your actions, and really try to customize your experience so it's going to benefit you long term. And one way we do that is through a program called the Griffin Edge. So basically, it's a way for students to look out and look back on and reflect on their experience so that when they graduate, they're really able to tell their story in a way that's going to resonate with others, whether that's a future employers, graduate school committees, uh, medical school committees, they're gonna be able to hear you and see you and understand what you've done on campus. And we try to integrate that through what we call the five E's that will change your life. So they are excellence in academics, engagement on campus, 
experience, which could be, again, clinical rotations, internships, or job opportunities, empathy, which comes into service and our mercy values, and then encouragement, being able to build relationships on campus, get to know others, and form mentorship relationships with faculty. Then just to talk a little bit about what we our office. So GMRCU is rolling admissions. So basically, we don't have a hard deadline, so to speak, for our applications. Then once we have everything we need to review your file, we'll be able to get a decision out to you pretty quickly, typically within about two to three weeks. Uh, if you're still interested in looking for a place for fall 2021, our application is live on both our website and the Common App. For students looking to enroll in college for fall 2022, our fall 2022 apps will open on August 1st of this year. Again, both on on our website and on the Common app as well. And for first year students that are applying, we are test optional as of this year for all of our academic programs. So pretty much all students are gonna need to submit their application, their high school transcript, and then some majors are requiring students to take additional steps to be considered for possible admission. That includes an interview or submitting a letter of recommendation. But if you guys have any questions about that, want to learn more about GMercy or come for a visit, I'll go ahead and plop some information into the chat for you. We'd be more than happy to have you out on campus. It is open. We have been since uh, February. So we'd love to have you come see what we're all about or attend one of our virtual programs. Awesome. Thank you so much. If you have any questions for Gwen and Mercy University, please put it down in the Q&A at the bottom. Next up, we have Hampshire College. Hello, everyone. My name is Emily C. Bilodeau. I use she, her pronouns, um, and I'm Assistant Director of Admissions for Hampshire College, which is located in beautiful Western Massachusetts. Uh, Hampshire is a small private liberal arts college with around 700 students. I could talk for hours about all of the wonderful things about Hampshire, but I only have six minutes. So I'm really going to focus on the things that we feel set us apart from other small liberal arts institutions. So what I'm going to review with you tonight is our narrative evaluations, the five college consortium and our divisional system. First up, we have our narrative evaluations. So at Hampshire, faculty use long form narrative format to give students evaluations at the end of each course instead of letter or number grades. So instead of getting an A or an 83, you will get anywhere from two paragraphs to two pages of detailed written feedback at the end of every course. Uh, this eliminates the competitiveness from the classroom. It really encourages students to engage meaningfully and thoughtfully in their education. And it gives the full picture of who you are as a student and as a scholar, both as you're reading your transcript and as anybody who's reading your transcript will see. Uh, the next thing I'll highlight is the five college consortium, Hampshire College, along with Smith College, Amherst College, Mount Holyoke College, and University of Massachusetts Amherst filled the five college consortium. Uh, through the consortium, Hampshire students have access to over 6,000 courses, including graduate level classes, uh, 900 clubs, 15 million library volumes, all for no extra cost. I like to think of it as five colleges for the price of one. Uh, Hampshire students, the, mass, the vast majority of them do take advantage of this resource. Uh, usually students take around six courses through the consortium. Some take none, some take 13. It's really up to you. Um, but a lot of students do try to complete five college bingo, meaning they try to take a course at each of the colleges while they're at Hampshire. There is a free bus system that allows students to transport easily between the campuses and students can use their meal plans at the other schools. Um, having this as a resource really allows students to have the freedom and flexibility that our curriculum offers and the small campus feel of, of a small school while having the resources of this larger network right at their fingertips. The last big thing I will highlight is our divisional system. The divisional system is our unique curriculum in which every student designs their own program of study with the help of faculty advising committees. Uh, at Hampshire, every student designs their curriculum and the divisional system, which is broken up into three sections, gives you the structure and the scaffolding to guide you on your way. Um, at the end of your time at Hampshire, every student will create a division three project, which is a year long large scale project that is based on what you are passionate about and the questions that drive you. It takes a different shape and form for every student from a research paper or lab experiment 
to a novel art installation, performance piece, app, business plan. It's really gonna be different for every student and it allows them to dive in and really explore what they're passionate about. Uh, recently published in a Forbes article, Hampshire was ranked number eight among liberal arts colleges when measuring the impact of individuals who are connected with the school. You might recognize some faces in this lovely collage of some of our alumni change makers. 65% uh, of Hampshire students go on to receive a higher degree within 10 years of graduating. And we are in the top 3% of colleges whose students go on to receive a PhD. 90% of our alums report landing a job or starting grad school within six months of graduating. And one in four of our students go on to start their own business or nonprofit. Um, some of these companies started as division three projects then grew into something much larger um, like Stonyfield Organic Yogurt, uh, seventh generation cleaning products and Duolingo, which you might recognize Jose Fuentes in the top corner, who is the CEO. Um, it's also worth noting that Hampshire is on an 800 acre gorgeous campus, which also neighbors a 2000 acre state park. So we have plenty of room for lots of outdoor activities, lots of outdoor programming, and we also have a full campus farm. Um, we're also one of the most sustainable colleges in the country with solar fields um, that are able to reach 100% of our energy needs and hosting two living buildings on campus, including the RW Kern Center, which I've included this cute little picture of right here. Um, if you wanna learn more about Hampshire, if you want to hear about how all of our dorms are singles or how we have been test blind for about seven years now, um, I've included my email in the chat or on the screen and I'll put it in the chat as well. Um, feel free to reach out to me to ask any questions that you might have if you wanna learn more about what Hampshire has to offer. Um, thank you so much for your time and your attention tonight and I will pass it on to the next presenter. Awesome, thank you so much. If you have any questions for Hampshire College, please put it down in the Q&A at the bottom. Last but certainly not least, we have Harcum College. Hi guys, my name is Crystal Popiel and I'm an admissions counselor at Harcum College. Harcum College is located in Bryn Mawr, Pennsylvania. We were founded in 1915 and we are a private nonprofit associate degree granting institution. Um, we actually started as an all girls finishing school and we didn't become co-educational until 2003. But one of the things that sets Harcum apart from um, community college is the fact that we do have residence halls on campus. Um, resident, if you're looking to live away from home and get that experience, we can definitely provide that for you. We are Division I and Division II Athletics. Athletics is a great way for you to meet other students, stay in shape, and offset the cost of tuition as we have lots of scholarship opportunities available within athletics. We have over 20 associate degree granting majors that we offer, as well as some certificate offerings. Um, the certificate offerings are a great way to help a student get started in a career or help them advance in a career that they already have. So just a little bit more about us. Um, Harcum College, we're known for our allied health science programs and we have extremely high pass rates. Most of our allied health science programs have over a 91% pass rate on the licensure exam. So our students are prepared to graduate, excel on their boards and start their career. And we pride ourselves on our high pass rate and it speaks volumes to the program, professors and the students. We also have over 15 articulation agreements set up with four-year institutions. So if you decide you would like to continue on and get your bachelor's degree, it would be in a two plus two format and this would provide you with the seamless transfer. We have a great transfer and career services department here. They really work with our students to get you to your end goal, whether that's um, working in the field immediately or transferring to a four-year institution. We also have high school articulation agreements set up with some um, high schools and tech schools. So if you took a program specific course in high school, you could potentially transfer that in for college credit. And then Harcum College, we're a smaller school. We, um, the, stu the typical student to um, professor ratio is about 16 to one. So you get a lot of individualized attention from your um, professors, from your program directors. And then we also have alternative decision options. Um, these are offered to students who may not meet the requirements for a major, or maybe they haven't completed prerequisites we require for a certain major. Um, this option gives you a chance to attend Harcum, get your GPA up, or take those required prerequisite courses, and then later go on to your original desired major. And the great thing about this is um, if you, uh, you know, if you attend in one of these options, you'll have priority seating down the line in your major of choice. 
We also have individualized financial packages. So all, all accepted students will um, work directly with a financial aid counselor through the entire process. Um, and they'll have a award letter that's tailored directly to them. We have scholarships and grants that we offer as well. And the full list of scholarships and grants are listed on our website. And then here is a list of all of the majors that we offer. All of our majors are designed to prepare students to begin their career in the workforce right after you graduate. So there's no major that we offer that you have to get a bachelor's degree. And as you can see, we have a variety of different majors that we offer. Um, I've grouped them kind of by color, but if you look for our design majors, we offer fashion design, fashion merchandising, graphic design, interior design, and photography. We actually just um, opened up a new art and design center, which is located less than a mile from our main campus. And that's where all of our design students students have their classes. We have a cluster of business programs that we offer as well. So we have accounting, business management, marketing, and sports management. Um, students in these programs are learning technical skills, communication skills, and so much more. And then as I mentioned earlier, we're known for our allied health science um, majors that we offer. Um, students are able to work hands-on in our allied health majors, as well as gain um, real-world understanding and experience through clinical affiliations that we have. We have a 16 chair clinic facility for our dental students, an animal clinic on campus that houses six different types of animals for our veterinary nursing and our animal center management majors. And then we also have on campus lab settings for other allied health science majors as well. And then for fall 2021, we'll actually be offering two new majors, behavioral health sciences and massage therapy. And we're really excited about these majors. So we have lots of resources available for our students. These resources are included within tuition and we encourage our students to take advantage of these resources because they're put in place to make sure that you're successful while you're at Harcum. So we have academic coaching. We have an awesome office of disability services. The director of that department is also our learning specialist. So he helps students with time management, test anxiety, organizational skills, and so much more. We have a tutoring center on campus and then we also have counseling services as well. So for the application process, the first step um, in the process is to complete an application online. It's free to apply online if you just go to our website um, and fill that application out. And then once you apply, you'll be assigned a specific admissions counselor who's gonna work with you through your entire process. Most of our majors only require an official high school transcript. Um, our allied health science majors tend to require the SAT, but for fall 2021, we've um, become test optional. And then the personal letter and letter of recommendation, those need to be submitted depending on the major, but typically for there for our allied health science majors and then um, our non-allied health majors do not have to submit that. And then as far as the FAFSA goes, we encourage our students to complete their FAFSA ahead of time. Um, this can be done right before you apply or after you apply. You do not need to be accepted to um, enter in our school code. And then next we just have some important information here. Um, the Harcum website is www.harcum.edu, and this is where you can learn more about the college and the different majors that we offer and submit an application online for free. We will have, be having a virtual instant decision day coming up as well as a virtual open house. So definitely go to our website um, and you can register for both of those events. Thank you so much. Awesome, thank you so much. If you have any questions for Harcum College, please put it down in the Q&A at the bottom. Uh, I would actually love to invite our all of our presenters back on video, if you could, please, because I have a question for you all. We have a few extra minutes, so I have a question for you all, and that question is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? So this is super important for our attendees to hear, and I would love to see what advice you all have since you're experts in your fields. So we're just going to go in presentation order. Uh, University of Tennessee, you're first. Hey guys, uh, the best advice I would give you, one, apply early, two, research your intended school's website for important information and dates, and then three, contact your admissions counselor to develop that personal relationship so that way you have a point of contact. Awesome, thank you. Glenville State College? Um, my advice would definitely be if you can visit a college campus, if they're allowing those to definitely take advantage of that. Um, it's really hard to kind of share everything that we have to offer in six minutes on this little screen. So if you can go visit, um, if not, definitely take advantage of all of the virtual sessions and things that we have available to you. So take advantage of meeting with the professor or talking to your counselor, um, we're here to help. 
Cool. Thank you so much. Goucher College? So I would definitely echo the sentiment about visiting, whether virtually or in person. But I think what's really important is to make sure that you are the one that's in the driver's seat when you're making this decision. Um, not to say that you shouldn't have input from those around you, but this ultimately is your own journey. So keep that in mind. Fantastic advice so far. Gwen and Mercy University, what would you add? Well, I feel like all the ladies that have come before me have made some really excellent points, you know, and um, like Megan said, being authentic to yourself through the process is really, really important because uh, we know sometimes it's really easy to get caught up in, you know, what your friends are thinking about doing or what your teacher thinks you should do or your mom or your dad or your coach, but you really need to think about what you want and what's going to make you happy because you're the one that's going to be there for four years, not them. So I would say just be authentic. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid to contact an admissions counselor. Like, we are here for you. We are more than happy to help. There's no such thing as a silly question. And, you know, you'd be surprised once you build those close relationships with people, it makes the college search and the application process so much easier when you have a point of contact that you can rely on. Awesome. Thank you. Hampshire College? Again, echoing everything all of y'all have already said. Um, but I would add, ask to reach out with a, a current student. Um, they are the ones in classes. They are the ones living the campus experience, especially if it's a school who's only virtual right now. Asking to speak to a current student who is interested in what you are interested in is the best way to really get a, a solid feel of what the student experience is during this time. Thank you. Thank you. Harcum College? Hi guys, I definitely agree with what everybody else said, um, but I know it can be an overwhelming process, but just try not to be overwhelmed with it. You know, the admissions team, we, we are here to help you. We're here to support you. We're here to walk you through the process and definitely, um, yeah, just, you know, go to student, go to the school websites, check out the information they have and definitely attend um, as many open house events or events that, that you can. Awesome. Thank you all so much for that advice. I know I learned a few things, so I think our attendees probably did as well. And I hope you all as my attendees were taking some notes. With that said, we have reached the end of the college fair. I told you time flies when you are having fun. 45 minutes went by super quickly. But again, I wanna thank our panelists and presenters uh, for being here this evening. Thank you to our attendees for joining us at this virtual college fair. I hope you learned a lot about these amazing institutions. Before you head out, just a couple quick things. A quick survey after you close this window, very quick survey, four questions will appear uh, before you close out the window, uh, or I'm sorry, sorry, after you close out the window. So just give us some feedback, that'd be fantastic. Also sign up for more sessions. We do have more sessions happening in the next time slot. So feel free to sign up for those. And last but not least, remember if you wanna rejoin us or revisit the fun, a uh, recording of this session will be available at strivescan.com backslash New Jersey. With that said, you all, thank you again so, so much for joining and I hope you have a great night. Bye everybody.